We've all heard the term full-stack engineer, but what is the full-stack? How does it work? Just as important as understanding code, software, and hardware is understanding the web stack. Most modern software is built and runs on the web stack. Most engineering teams are thinking constantly about it. Let's use an analogy to start. Imagine I'm at a restaurant and I'm sat here at a table. I'm a client of this restaurant. This is a restaurant that lets me order using numbers, so I order a number 1, number 19, and number 31. And, because this restaurant likes me to pay up front, I give my credit card along with this order. Number 1 corresponds to a burger, number 19 a bap, and number 31 is some lettuce. Who hears my order? Who does this request go to? If you're in the UK, you'd call them a waiter, but if you're in the US, you'd call them a server. So, the server receives my request. The server has just heard me order numbers 1, 19, and 31, and gotten my credit card. Before they go to the chef to go make the food, the server needs to do some checks to know what to do with that information. The first check they need to run is to look at the menu. They need to know if the numbers I've ordered actually correspond with the items they have for sale. So they take a little look at the menu, they check each item, and they say, yeah, we have those items. You could imagine, in a way, that the server is asking the menu if these numbers correspond to items, and the menu is saying back to the server, yeah, we have those items. The second check they need to run is whether I have successfully paid. If it's a no, they're just going to tell me I can't have my food. So, they go to a card machine, along with my card details. Like the menu, we can imagine the server is asking the card machine, hey, do these details cover this cost? Note that I didn't need to add up the cost of the items myself. The server did that for me. Let's assume that the payment is successful. The card machine responds to the server saying, yeah, those card details paid for that cost. The two checks have passed, so the server can go to the next stage. The server goes to the kitchen, or the chef in the kitchen, and says either a number 1, 19 or 31, or perhaps a burger, a bap, and lettuce. So let's zoom over to the chef's world. They just received a request from a trusted server, so they know for sure that the menu items exist and payment succeeded. But they have to do special checks of their own as well. The first check the chef needs to make is, do we have the ingredients? So the chef goes to look in the fridge, where ingredients are stored. Let's represent the items in the fridge using this little drum here. And let's assume that the fridge does indeed have three ingredients the chef needs, and the chef returns to their workstation with those ingredients. The chef's next step is to go to the cooker to make the dish. Again, like the menu and the card machine, we can sort of imagine the chef is sending all the ingredients into the cooker, and the cooker is returning back to the chef a completed dish. So, after these two stages, the chef returns to the server, who's been waiting for them, with a completed dish. And this means the server is able to respond back to me with that dish. Hooray! I got the response to my request. Let's freeze frame now to add some colour to this analogy. First, some terminology. I'm the client in this situation. The person in the middle, they're the server. What makes them a server? Simply that they handle and respond to requests. So the chef is another kind of server, because they handle and respond to requests from the person who's looking after me. And the card machine, the menu, they're servers again. They all handle and respond to requests. What is the fridge? Well, on one hand, it responds to the chef's request for food, so it's clearly a server of some sort. But it's very simple on the inside. Inside, the fridge just stores food and returns it. It just stores objects and data. So in our analogy, we could say the fridge is a kind of database. Now, let's notice some other interesting things about this system. First, I just sent a request over to the server saying 1, 19, 31, and here's my card. And what I got back was my food. I didn't need to see any of this. This just happened for me. And similarly, the chef never even spoke to me. As far as they're concerned, they live in a tiny, isolated world where they just receive requests from servers and send dishes back to them. 
and the server never goes and talks to the fridge. As a result, chefs never need to think about payments, and servers never need to think about cooking food. Each of these entities has a perfect separation of responsibilities. They're free to do the things they do in perfect isolation. This separation of responsibilities idea is very common in software, all the way from building software to running large-scale software services, and even building software teams. The idea can be summarized as make sure things are responsible for a limited number of activities and no more. It just helps to divvy up the work.